last class we have seen uh, how end terminations are uh, used to terminate the cables. So, in this class we will see uh, joints or splicing or jointing of power cables. Please go through this paper section 2.1 and section 2.2 especially. So, you must read as part of the syllabus. Splicing and jointing or jointing. So, inevitability of cable joints. So, cables are heavy and difficult to transport and there are uh, the drum length is fixed. So, due to these uh, uh, limitations, so we have to uh, use joints to joint the cables that are produced in different lengths. So, not only these, but also due to uh, failure of the cables, whenever cable failure fault occurs. So, that part portion need to be uh, repaired and then the cable is to be joined uh, using cable joint. So, this, uh, this is how the uh, joints are inevitable for uh, power cable uh, transmission. So, here are some joints shown here. Uh, so, one joint is shown here. Joints are needed for easy repair and replacement of cables in cases like faults, especially in undersea cables. So, you can see this is uh, how, uh, you know, subsea cable repair joint is shown here. So, it is uh, very you know heavy or uh, rigid in structure because under C we have to take care of external damages also. So, on the right side you see 11 kilo volt 3 core PILC cable. So, existing cable this is a old cable say paper insulated uh, cable and then uh, it has to be joined with uh, uh, an XLP cable the modern cable. So, how to join these them, uh, these two different types of cables. So, a transition joint, uh, uh, the joint named as transition joint is to be used for this. We will see soon what it is. So, integrating newly laid cables into existing networks is also a need where uh, joint is uh, inevitable. And what is a cable joint? A joint or a splice is defined as the insulated and fully protected connection between two or more cables. So, here are uh, the uh, different uh, components of uh, joint are shown here. So, you can see uh, here this is a three core cable. So, this is core one, core two, core three. You can see three cables and this is the joint structure here, the main joint structure here, but uh, this uh, three core cable, so three cores are uh, taken out of this side and this side, you know, you can see. So, they have to be joined very carefully. So, the copper mesh uh, to connect uh, uh, joint screens to cable screens is to be used here again, the joint screens uh, are to be connected to cable screens and then current carrying earth strap. So, this uh, uh, is needed for you know uh, return currents of the cable. So, this has to be the this side also, uh, this side also we have such a um, current carrying uh, construction. So, that has to be joined using this uh, strap. And then uh, metal canister, so to cover the cable uh, joint completely and then outside sleeve. So, these are typically a joint, uh, uh, you know, components. And then uh, so different attributes we will see. So, here uh, cross section of a joint is uh, shown here, exactly cut in the center. So, you can see the cross section. There is this black layer here also and in the center also. These are semiconducting materials actually and the rest of this white portion is insulating portion. 
So you can see just like uh, termination, we also have such a construction, a cone type of construction. So this is actually a cylindrical structure which is cut in half. So you, you are seeing the cross sectional area. So this is a, 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 a three dimensional structure actually. It looks like, you know, uh, cone. So this is also a stress cone, uh, it is called. So here uh, you can see angle of departure from, so he, this is the cable structure. A cable semicon will be there until this, uh, until this portion. Cable semicon will be there. Beyond this portion cable semicon, here in this portion cable semicon is not there, it is removed. So uh, this uh, uh, cable enters here and then uh, from here you can see the semiconducting material will all uh, will act like a shield, uh, field uh, grading shield, and the departure angle is typically three to seven degrees, just like in the case of termination. Again, here the conductor uh, will be jointed in this portion, and then the jointed conductor uh, has to be, you know, again the stress has to be limited. So again, this type of construction where uh, electric field is graded or you know sharp edges are avoided and then the electric field will be maintained within the limit. So this is how then again on the above the conductors this is actually joint uh, of the joint jointing of the conductor portion. So above the conductor you see this semicon layer will be cylindrical structure again this one is so will be laid over the uh, conductors. So here this this kind of structure radi provides some certain radius of curvature by which uh, the electric field is uh, limited again. So this is a typical structure of a joint. Now here the uh, right side it is shown. So uh, the heat shrinkable transition joint parts are shown. So how the conductors are jointed here. This uh, we will have separate slides for this you can see. So these are all, uh, you know, uh, bolts actually removed from here. So and wherever spaces are there, actually this is there is a empty space here. This is uh, used for the jointing the conductors. So crimp actually, this is a crimp. So inside two conductors will be there here from this side uh, conductor and this side conductor, which will be uh, tightened using these. Uh, uh, nuts and bolts here. So these uh, ha have been cut off and then only the surface can be seen here smooth. But inside there is some wires. So these wires and here also there is some wire. These wires have to be filled up using mastic materials. So in order to uh, make it wire free. So elimination of wires at the interface uh, faces between the cable and joint body is to be done using mastic uh, material. So this is how proper electric field grading for all you know pertaining to cable operating conditions have to be done uh, before jointing. So this again the cable joint uh, different uh, uh, parts are shown here. So this is copper mesh you have just now seen uh, just before. So copper mesh and again current carrying earth strap this is uh, of course if copper strap and these are uh, perfect then this can be avoided uh, this uh, copper mesh is uh, sufficient then this current carrying earth strap can be avoided that's why it is optional so con uh, conduction of charging or fault currents to ground to do so giants must contain the cable metallic screen or sheath that's what is needed and subsea solutions you can see uh, the ou outside structure is a metallic case very rigid so this uh, will prevent uh, any damages uh, due to uh, you know subsea disturbances so physical protection against outer environment is essential in case of subsea ca cable joints that's why the cable joint is to be rigidly placed under a metallic case and then classification of cable joints based on location of uh, installation uh, 
so the cable joints can be classified based on location here uh, this is a factory joint factory joint means a joint between extrusion lengths manufactured under controlled factory conditions so this is uh, uh, a factory joint so this is during manufacturing process itself so to enable the manufacture of long continuous lengths of subsea power cables and umbilicals umbilicals it is uh, necessary for the manufacturer to joint shorter lengths of power cords using the cable assembly layup layup uh, process so these uh, kind of joints are known as factory joints so they for example you see the uh, you know cable being laid on a ship this is actually on a ship so very a long length of cable uh, will be laid on the ship because uh, it is better to avoid as far as possible avoid the joints for a subsea cable or submarine cable so therefore very long length is manufactured using factory joints only in fact the uh, manufacturing uh, uh, company will be chosen offshore only and the ship will be in the uh, sea and directly the manufactured cable may be laid on the uh, ship itself so this is how long length of cable uh, is uh, manufactured using factory joints there the whatever joints that are used in the manufacturing process are uh, called uh, uh, factory joints this these are joints between extrusion lengths actually so then uh, other kinds of joints repair joints you can say joint between two cables that are completed with all construction elements uh, and the second third one is the field joint so a joint between two cables that are completed with all construction elements but as well as it is in a state as installed in the field in actual cable system so this is uh, what is known as factory uh, field joint so the next classification is uh, based on the types of cables whether the same type of cable or xlp like that uh, or different types of cables or different designs so these are uh, uh, of three types again straight through joint straight through joint means there is no difference between this cable and this cable both are xlp and both are in design also same dimensions everything same so such joints are known as straight through joints and then next one is asymmetric joint asymmetric joint means a joint connecting two cables with same insulation system means both sides say xlp this side also xlp this side also xlp but of different design so this side the conductor size or insulation screen size etc are uh, one side different from the other side in that case it is called asymmetric joint the third one is transition joint transition joint is used between different materials and different de designs as well as so xlp and pilc cables so these uh, joint connecting two cables with the different insulation systems is uh, known as a transition joint so you can see this is paper cable so this is a cross linked polyethylene cable so the paper cable has to be joined with cross-linked polyethylene cable. Uh, this happens in, you know, for example, old installations are uh, cable, old, old installations are using uh, paper insulated cables, while the new ins installations are cross-linked polyethylene. When these were to be joined, uh, then obviously we have to use such kind of joint, which is known as transition joint and fundamentals of cable jointing so here you have seen just now the cross section a few slides ago so this is xlp cable again so this is a stress cone type of construction so this is a cable end stress cone it is called it has on both sides of the cable this is cable 2 this is cable 1 so this cable 1 cable 2 so these two are to be joined so both sides you will have this stress cone connection construction here also it is there and here also this is stress cone connection it is a cylindrical structure actually the cross section is shown here so then um, you have main insulation this is the main uh, joint insulation joint insulation say silicon rubber or ep rubber 
or whatever it is. So, this, uh, this portion, uh, white or yellow portion shown here, this is uh, main insulation of the joint. So, this is cable insulation, say XLP, XLP. Okay, then this is uh, silicon rubber, silicon rubber or EP rubber, EP rubber. So, ethylene propylene rubber. And then uh, uh, you can see the conductors. This is, this is conductors and conductors are joined here. There are several methods to join these conductors. Uh, so, conductors are joined and after that, you can see insulating body. This is insulating body. Inner field uh, control layer. So, this is again, uh, as we discussed just now, this is again uh, the, um, uh, you know, Giant portion where uh, to grade the uh, field in, in in inner side, and then um, this is outer stress deflector again conductive polymer here. So and in a giant housing, giant housing. This entire structure is uh, giant housing. This entire structure is. Uh, actually how joint housing and then there are a cable joint has uh, four main parts conductor connection conductor connection ferrule uh, and stress control parts and main joint insulation and then housing or outer covering so stress control parts are you know this uh, ma mainly this is stress cone and then outer covering uh, or housing uh, already explained in sheets, jackets, and armors. Okay, so these are all the main uh, main parts of a uh, you know schematic of a cable jointing. So for a solder joint, a flux is used to clean the surface of the wires uh, before the solder is applied. So for uh, cleaning a copper conductor, a flux is used actually, which is consisting of a weak acid. So, it will clean the surface and a weak back ferrule or a tubular ferrule, uh, ferrule which uh, slits is uh, used to cover both halves of the uh, stranded metallic conductor. And the sta stranded conductors from both sides of the cables are inserted into the ferrule and the ferrule is then tightened to grip the strands properly. So, this is this is how it is done and then uh, the assembly is heated by a blow lamp the strands are uh, wetted uh, with a flux so the solder consists of a tin and lead alloy in the ratio 60 is 40 so once the flux uh, penetrates the uh, interstice space of the strand the molten solder is then poured over so repeating three to four times ensuring that the solder has wetted all the wires of the strand. The assembly is then cooled by wiping the joint with a wet cloth. So, this is how uh, the soldering of conductors is done. And then crimp connectors. So, crimp is you know, due to the cold flow characteristic of materials, it is possible to join conductors using the compression method. So, uh, this is how uh, it is uh, compressed using a crimp. So this is the structure high strength aluminum alloy connector tube uh, is uh, this one so aluminum alloy connector and shear of uh, shear of uh, head bolts these so these will cut off after you know for example here it is shown the bolt is shown after reaching this depth uh, the head portion uh, above it uh, will simply break off so this portion this entire portion will simply break off so that uh, it will be smooth and the surface it will be smooth. So this is how it is done actually. There is a, you see for example here two different uh, types of conductors are given here. One is copper and there is uh, aluminum. So here the uh, share of board, boards also shown here. The head already so here, uh, broken here also here also. So here it is there still. So, this is how the conductor is inserted and then after that these bolts will be tightened and they will break after certain depth. So, this is how it is done. Let us see the video that will give more explanation about it.
Yeah, next topic is uh, uh, stress control parts. So these uh, for uh, stress control actually the voids that result in the co concentration of electrical stress and hence partial discharges are to be filled actually. So here you can see there are voids in separate, several places. This uh, boards where uh, uh, the share of boards have gone. There are also some voids. So these have to be properly uh, sealed. Here also there is a gap between crimp and this insulation. So, wide filling mastic strips or clay mastic strips are to be used here. This is a mastic strip you can see. It is a material actually, high dielectric constant material normally. So, wides in ferrule and uh, ferrule insulation interfaces is filled with uh, this mastic material. And ferrules and cut portions are wrapped with stress control mastic tapes. So, as shown here, these are all the tapes. Stress control heat shrink tubes. So, above that, we can put this uh, kind of heat shrink tubes, which will uh, sh uh, shrink when uh, heated. So, this is how it is to be done. And main joint insulation. Main joint insulation, the base material of heat shrink tubing is commonly made of polyolefins, uh, which, when cross linked, shrink radially and but not longitudinally uh, when heated. So, this is how the tubes will be there and when you insert and then heat them, they will shrink radial. Heat shrink tubing is manufactured in a multitude of varieties and chemical makeups uh, with the exact composition of each type being dependent on the intended application such as stress control or insulation or protection or oil barrier. So, uh, used for low and medium voltage applications uh, less than 33 kilovolts. So, this is one heat shrink tube here it is shown. And heat shrink tubing in a cable joint is, uh, let us watch this video. Everything braid connection. So, heat shrink versus cold shrink uh, transition to cold shrink tubing. For indoor cables of small diameter, heat shrink provides better sealing as uh, manufacturing cold shrink tubes for small diameters is quite difficult and costly. But power cables cold shrink is simply superior in every aspect. Uh, 
uh, read the reference for more detail. Heat shrink tubes cannot uh, follow up with the thermal expansion and contraction of cables due to uh, weather and, and uh, end up leaving voids. Cold shrink tubes on the other hand withstand outs outdoor conditions like weather, wind, dust, etc. Uh, better than uh, heat shrink. Cold shrink tubes have better resistance to UV hence they degrade more slowly when compared to heat shrink tubes. Uh, unlike uh, heat shrink tubes, cold shrink tubes are hydrophobic hence uh, they are less susceptible to tracking. Cold shrink tubes are easier and safer to install uh, on field also. So this is how uh, let us play this video and see. 3M invented cold shrink technology over 30 years ago. Cold shrink. Our cold apply products utilize the unique cold shrink delivery system there. designed to make things jointing, insulating, like termination and abandonment as simple as possible. Compared to heat shrink alternative, there is less chance of damaging XLP cable material, less room for jointer error and no cooling time needed before energizing. It is easier to use in closed areas and there is no requirement for special site permits. In case of heat shrink, you should start from middle and finish one end and then other end in order not to uh, have air inside. Cold shrink simply, it is elastic, so it uh, under different weather conditions also, it will tackle the situation, but it's not the case with heat shrink. Then cold shrink uh, is made from either EPDM ethylene propylene diene monomer or silicon rubber that is uh, pre-stretched into a spiral core, so like this. After the cold shrink tube uh, has been placed over the joint or cable termination end, this inner spiral, this inner spiral is pulled out. The insulating tube then contracts to its pre-stretched size and shrinks onto the cable, exerting constant radial pressure for the lifetime of the joint or termination. So used for all medium and high voltage applications. So, smooth out the grease uh, for even coverage. So, there is some grease that is put on the coverage. Cold shrink tubing in a giant. Let us watch this. Adopted by dozens of power utilities across the world as their preferred cable jointing solution, our premium joints offer a built in semiconductive electrode, eliminating additional installation steps therefore delivering even more consistency. Unlike heat shrink alternatives, a molecular permanent set ensures consistent radial pressure is exerted on the cable for the duration of the cable joint's life. This is shield braid. In order to secure and Metallic. terminate the copper tape screen, a layer of 13 tape is applied. A split support ring is installed and over taped with Scotch 24 electrical shielding tape to provide a connection and bedding for the copper tape screen. A second layer of Scotch 24 is then applied to secure the copper tape screen. The cold shrink protection tube is then positioned over the cable, followed by the copper wire sleeve and the premium joint sleeve. The connector is installed according to the connector supplier's instructions. Connector. The majority of 3M kits now come complete with connectors. However, if required, an alternative connector can be used, providing they suit the requirements of the cable and fit dimensionally within the joint. Scotch Seal 5313 Mastic 
is used to fill the mechanical connector screw thing. holes and smooth out the connector profile. Three M cable cleaning wipes are then used to remove dirt and grease from the cable and connector. 3M P55 silicon grease is applied over the primary insulation, semiconductor screen and connector, remembering to leave the connector till last to avoid contamination. The premium joint has a built-in semiconductive electrode, so there is no need to overtake the connector. Therefore, the next stage is to reposition the premium joint body over the connector and install. These products are cold applied and therefore quicker, easier and safer to install than heat shrink alternatives. And they are also ideal where hot work permits are difficult to obtain. Scotch Seal 5313 Mastic Tape is applied between the end of the joint body and the copper tape screen and over taped with Scotch so Treble 2 8 tape. tape. The sleeve is then repositioned Not over the joint. It is then fixed in place with bandit strap and installed using a bandit pocket tool. This provides a complete 360 degree earth screen around the joint. Conductor screen. Conductor to conductor and conductor screen to screen. Bravo. Scotch treble 2 8 tape is then applied onto the Game cable sheet and copper stocking at both ends. The cold shrink protection tube is then positioned over the joint. The floor is then removed by hand to install. The live memory action of the specially formulated material shrinks the protection tube into position and ensures a constant radial pressure and seal. And cable breakouts, so these are uh, uh, few, three core cables actually, these are called, this type of construction is called uh, breakout, so this is heat shrink breakout, this is cold shrink breakout, cable breakouts are used to protect the crutch area, this area is known as crutch area, where the three core cables are coming out uh, from a single cable, this is a cable, three cores of three phases, uh, where they are just coming out, thus that area is known as crutch area and very sensitive area where breakdown uh, is reported to have occurred frequently. They are used in multi-core uh, giants and determinations, but these uh, uh, breakouts are used in multi-core uh, giants and determinations.
and cable end caps where we were sealing the cable. So, these uh, actually uh, to avoid penetration of moisture into the conductor, this is done. Normally, cables are not longitudinally waterproof. So, therefore, these caps are required wherever you are uh, opening the cable. Cable end caps normally made of silicon rubber provide pressure tight seals that prevent moisture ingress at the ends. The cold shrink cable caps perform better than the hot shrink uh, counterparts. This is hot shrink and this is a heat shrink. This is a cold shrink, uh, uh, you know, end cap. And straight through joints. So, this is a cross section of a straight through joint. So, just now uh, you have seen a joint, no? so that is also a straight through joint, exactly same type of cable is jointed. So, here uh, 3M cold shrink joint body is given here. So, here you can see the central uh, uh, conductor and then uh, above that, uh, you know, this is uh, electrode conductor and constant force spring uh, both sides. And uh, this is how the structure will be. Just now you have seen the exactly same thing is here. Cold shrink rubber joint construction. So let us see this video again. The 3M standard cold shrink tape electro joint offers a viable cost based alternative to heat shrink cable jointing technology. Unlike heat shrink alternatives, a molecular permanent set ensures constant radial pressure is exerted on the cable for the duration of the cable joint's life. This range covers many of the most common cable configuration and size ranges unique to the UK market. The electrode in this case is built up by the joiner using Scotch 13 electrical semiconducting tape and the 3M cold shrink splice does the rest, with no heat or tools needed at all. cable cleaning wipes are then used to remove dirt and grease from the cable and smooth out the connector profile. Remembering to leave the connector to last to avoid contamination. The joint body is then installed. These products are cold applied and therefore quicker, easier and safer to install than heat shrink alternatives. And they are also ideal where hot work permits are difficult to obtain. Seal 5313 mastic tape is applied between the end of the joint body and the copper wire screen and over tape with Scotch 228 tape. Mastic material.
the copper wire sleeve is then repositioned over the joint. It is then fixed in place with a constant force screen. This provides a complete 360 degree earth screen around the joint for added protection. PVC tape is then applied over the constant force screens. Scott's Treble 2 8 mastic pad is then used to cover the PVC tape and cable jacket at both ends. The first smaller cold shrink protection tube is then positioned over the joint. The core is then removed by hand to install. The live memory action of the specially formulated material shrinks the protection tube into position and ensures a constant radial Absolutely. pressure and seal. Scott's Treble 2 8 mastic tape is applied in preparation for the larger protection tube. The larger 3M cold shrink protection tube is then positioned over the joint, overlapping the small protection tube and then installed. Analysis of a simple XLP rubber system. Here uh, you can see here. So this is the conductor, joint, insulating rubber, semiconducting rubber, and this is also uh, semiconducting rubber here. So this, uh, for example, this portion can be approximated like this XLP rubber, multi-layer sample actually. So how the electric fields uh, will change? With temperature and electric field, uh, temperature uh, have been derived by one of my students, the uh, Purnabhishek. So it is uh, in this paper, you may go through that one. So this is the thickness of the ins insulation, XLPE portion and rubber portion. You can see this is the temperature 30 to 90, it is changed. So this boundary, XLPE boundary temperature. And rubber boundary temperature is kept at 35 degrees centigrade. You can see as the temperature is increased, XLP boundary temperature is increased, rubber, the electric field inside the rubber, that is in giant, the electric field is increasing. On the contrary, if you keep temperature of this uh, XLP boundary constant and rubber boundary temperature, if you go on increasing, then uh, this is how the XLP boundary uh, electric field will increase uh, here. So, but actually this is the, uh, you know, uh, most frequent case, means a practical case where uh, ambient temperature, the giant is outside, so it is close to ambient temperature and inside depends on the current. So, the conductor temperature, say for example, depends on the current. So, this is how electric field will uh, change. So, the electric field inside the rubber will be more under loaded conditions. And if it is lightly loaded, then uh, the uh, electric field will be more in the inside XLPE. 
or cable. So XLP experiences peak stress when the cable is unloaded, but rubber experiences peak stress when the cable is loaded. Giants experience premature failures. Uh, this is how this is the consequence of the inverse temperature dependence of conductivity. So this is a mainly effect of this conductivity. The conductivity of insulating materials is nonlinear, and it follows like this. It's not a ohmic relationship. Uh, uh, it doesn't follow Ohm's law. Uh, there is a deviation. The uh, uh, in in other words, the sigma or the conductivity changes with temperature as well as electric field in nonlinear fashion. So approximately empirically it is uh, approximated as e to the power of a mod e minus b by t. So this is uh, reported in this paper. So this how the uh, dynamics of uh, load or temperature load or temperature will change the electric field dynamics in giant and uh, cable insulation. And the last one is transition giants. Transition giants, as already uh, explained, are gi will join XLP and PLC typically. So they join two different kinds of giants. So this is how the giant body will look like. So here uh, different methods are to be followed. For example, in PLC cable, paper insulated uh, cable. Uh, there will be oil inside the paper insulation that need to be stopped from escaping from the paper insulation. So, an oil barrier tube is used here. So, here there are different uh, uh, layers which are used uh, in the cable body, uh, sorry, giant body are listed here. So, warm drive clamp, armor continuity connection, binding wire, copper braid, dual wall sleeve, insulating sleeve. Uh, inline connect, uh, connector, stress control mastic, stress control sleeve, oil barrier tube, semiconducting sleeve, semiconducting breakout, wire filling mastic, hot melt uh, adhesive. So, so many materials are uh, used, several uh, tubes, and actually, it is a uh, big uh, kit. Actually, cable giant is a big kit. So, that um, Mm, uh, the objective here is to uh, carefully join the inner conductors and avoid stress gray, stress uh, enhancement at any place. In oil, uh, oil paper uh, insulation means that paper cable has to be sealed using oil barrier sleeves. It is uh, inevitable there. And then uh, for stress control, you have to use proper stress controlling materials. So when whenever this uh, breakout comes here in this in this region, uh, stress uh, enhancement is reported. So therefore, mastic is used here, and wherever wires are expected, their mastic tapes are used. Uh, they are uh, high permittivity materials. So to reduce the electric field, these uh, uh, mastic materials are used. So this is how uh, a Transition giant is uh, uh, made, right, done, uh, and a deep looking into the transition giant. So, here we will see one more video. This is the kit. So, these are the materials, various tubes, and all.
ग्रेड फाइव Three cores of paper insulated cable. This is oil barrier tube. Break out. This is heat shrink breakout. Set this side. Chemical layer is removed.
plastic tape in wires. So there is a need for oil barrier tube on PLC uh, cable actually, oil percolation from PLC to XLP insulation shield. So here oil migration results in ab absorption of oil by the XLP insulated shield leading to loss of its uh, semiconducting properties and loss of dielectric strength of paper insulation both result in premature failure of cable joint. 
So any polymeric oil insulation cable joint needs an oil barrier system that prevents oil migration. So we have three choices actually. Compression oil stopper uh, used in oil filled cables. Heat shrink uh, polymer oil uh, barrier and uh, oil block mastic with uh, stress relieving properties, silicon rubber tape. So here these are the properties of various uh, uh, materials here, silicon rubber tape, so delta rho, percentage delta rho change in uh, uh, resistivity with the time. So oil barrier tube is also given here, time in days. So this uh, paper reports the properties you can go through that. Oil barrier tube a necessary evil. Actually, oil barrier tube has uh, the epsilon has this kind of properties. We have found uh, in uh, our lab actually. This is investigated by one of my students, Pranav Johari. So here uh, the coefficient of temperature is uh, negative. So this is uh, this means that um, it has. Uh, if uh, it has negative temperature dependence. So, uh, this is very bad actually. So, the, this results in electric field enhancement. This is oil barrier tube actually, polyolefin oil barrier tube. So, this is paper insulation. This is conductor of the uh, paper insulated cable, the outer uh, sheath. Now, the electric field is clearly seen to be high in polyolefin material and it, it was found that it will lead to premature breakdown also uh, due to which several giants have uh, already reported to have uh, failed. So this is a typical uh, uh, failure here, here. So, the crutch area, more freak, most frequent site of failure which is very close to a aisle barrier tube end actually. At the end of the aisle barrier tube also, it is a sensitive region where electric field is found to be uh, very high. So, the investigations are still uh, going on actually. So, this is about the jointing. So, if you have any questions, you may ask. Thank you.